Hello, and welcome to your pre-surgical rehabilitation education session. In this presentation, you will learn what to expect while you're in hospital and after you have your joint replacement. You will learn about precautions, which are things you are not allowed to do after surgery, what equipment you will need, tips on dressing after surgery, how to get in and out of bed in a car, and how to walk up and down stairs. You will also be shown what exercises to do and the signs and symptoms of infections and blood clots, as well as what follow-up therapy is offered after your surgery. After your joint replacement, we will try to get you moving as soon as possible. This includes getting out of bed and walking. After surgery, you are more at risk of developing a blood clot because you're in bed and not moving around as much. This can cause your blood flow to slow down, which can then pool and form a clot. To reduce the risk of this happening, you'll be given a blood thinner and you're encouraged to get moving. Pumping your ankles up and down regularly throughout the day and getting up and walking around as soon as you are able to can also reduce this risk. Lung complications such as chest infections can occur as a result of the anaesthetic and being in bed not moving. One way to wake up the lungs and clear them of anything that collects at the bottom during surgery is to take deep breaths and then cough. Do this 5-10 to 10 times every hour while you are awake. The best way to help clear your lungs is to get up and get moving. As we get up and move around, we naturally take deeper breaths. Most people go home the day after surgery, once you've been cleared by the doctor, nurses and rehab team. Some people will go home on the same day as surgery, but only if this has been pre-planned with the surgeon. There are certain things that we require of you before you go home from the hospital. We need you to be able to get in and out of bed on your own, walk safely with a walker or crutches, get up and down stairs if you have stairs at home, and be able to do the exercises that the physiotherapist will give you. When thinking about going home, please make sure you have a plan. If you live alone, you will need someone to stay with you for a week after surgery unless your surgeon tells you otherwise. You will also need to make sure you plan what vehicle will be picking you up and ensure that you will be able to get in and out okay. If you are having a total hip replacement, you will have to follow certain rules or precautions. These are no bending past 90 degrees, no crossing your legs, and no twisting. The muscles and ligaments that normally keep the hip joint in place get stretched and weakened during a total hip replacement surgery and require time to heal. While they are healing, they are weak. Movements such as crossing your legs, bending forward, sitting in a low chair, twisting or stooping put too much pressure on the healing muscles and ligaments and can cause the joint to dislocate. You should stick to these precautions until you are told otherwise by your surgeon. Pain and swelling are normal after a joint replacement. Make sure that you take your pain medication as prescribed as this will allow you to move more with less pain. Try not to let your pain get above 5 out of 10 where 0 is no pain and 10 is the worst pain you can think of. When your pain gets higher than this, it is more difficult to get back on top of it. Ice and elevation can help to reduce pain and swelling. When elevating your leg, you must get your foot higher than your heart to help to decrease the swelling. You should only keep ice on the joint for 15 to 20 minutes at a time to avoid an ice burn. However, if you have a cryocuff ice machine, this can stay on longer as it is constantly circulating so will not damage your skin.
After your surgery, you will need a two-wheeled walker, crutches if you have any stairs, a raised toilet seat, and something to help with bathing, for example, a bath bench or shower stool. You can borrow these from the Red Cross and a form will be completed for you prior to your surgery. You may find a leg lifter helpful for getting in and out of bed after surgery. It hooks around your foot and you can lift the leg in and out of bed. If you are having a hip replacement, some surgeons require you to purchase one of these. They will let you know prior to your surgery if it is something you will need. A sock aid and long handled shoehorn can be helpful after a hip replacement as you cannot bend down past 90 degrees to put your socks and shoes on for at least six weeks. A long handled reacher helps to pick things up from the floor after surgery as again you cannot bend down past 90 degrees. These items are available to purchase from many medical supply stores and pharmacies. Shown here are the details for the Red Cross in Kamloops. If you live outside of Kamloops, you can find your closest Red Cross location at redcross.ca. You should aim to pick up your equipment about a week before your surgery. If you think a leg lifter, sock aid, long handled reacher or shoehorn would be beneficial for you, then you should purchase those before your surgery as well. The next few slides will show you how to get in and out of a bath and how to use a leg lifter, sock aid and long handled reacher. So as far as the leg lifter goes, one way to demo how to use a leg lifter is if you're going home after your hip surgery and this is your car here, you're gonna have a adjustable height foam cushion to sit a bit higher if your seat's really low. You're gonna slide the seat back as far as it'll go and you might even recline the back of the seat a little bit. So the door of the car would be open and you would be wheeled up in your wheelchair or walk a few steps with your walker. You're going to turn and then sit first sideways on the seat. Now to use a leg lifter to help support getting in the car and help with your leg, you then lean back, keeping your hip open and then turn and get in the car. So the leg lifter is an item you can purchase at the medical supply store and the other option, if you don't want to have to purchase a separate item, is you could use a cane with the hook of the cane, turn and get in. So the hip precaution of keeping your hip open is important for people who've had hip surgery. The leg lifter also might be helpful for people who've had a total knee surgery.
From the time you wake up from surgery, your implants are strong enough to walk on with full weight bearing. There's no time required to stay off your feet or to restrict how much weight you put on your leg. In fact, the surgeons want you walking and improving your mobility each day. When using a walking aid, you should place the walker or crutches in front, then step your surgery leg, then the good leg. Try to remember to get your heel down first, then roll onto your toes and bend the knee when swinging it through. Don't hold your leg stiff and straight. There is no specific timeline for how long you should be on a particular walking aid. However, walking with a limp can put increased stress on the muscles around your back and hips, which could cause more pain. This may indicate it is too soon to progress from your walker or crutches. After your surgery, you will need to use a walking aid. To ensure your walker is the right height for you, the hand grips should come to the level of your wrist with your elbow straight. This way, when you have your hands on the walker, you will have a slight bend in your elbow. If the walker is too high or too low, it can put stresses on other joints and make it more difficult to walk. When fitting your crutches, the top should be three to four fingers away from your underarm so that you are not leaning down on them. There are lots of blood vessels and nerves under your arm that can be compressed if you are leaning on them. The hand grips, again, should come to the level of your wrists so that you have a slight bend in your elbows when holding the crutches. After your surgery, you'll be given exercises which could include the one shown here. Do the exercises as directed by your surgeon or physiotherapist. After your hip surgery, you'll be given a selection of exercises from the ones shown here. Remember to stick to your precautions and follow direction from your surgeon and physiotherapist. When going upstairs, remember to go up with the good, non-surgical side first, then the surgical side, then the crutches. When coming downstairs, lead with the crutches, then the bad, surgical side, then the good side. For a demonstration of how to get up and down stairs, continue to the next two slides. After surgery, you are more at risk of developing a blood clot because you are spending more time in bed and not moving around as much. If you notice that your calf is very swollen, very painful, or is hot and red, these are signs of a blood clot and you should go to the hospital and get this checked. You are also at risk of developing an infection following surgery. If you notice that there is lots of weeping coming through the dressing, there is redness around the incision that is spreading, or you're feeling generally unwell and feverish, these could be signs of infection, so you should go to the hospital and get checked. Follow-up for knee replacements and hip replacements are quite different. If you have a knee replacement, you will be assessed by a physiotherapist one to two weeks after your surgery. If you have a hip replacement, you will see your surgeon at around six weeks after your surgery. At that time, the surgeon will decide if you need physiotherapy and will refer you if they think you need it. Whether you have a knee or a hip replacement, you should continue to work on the exercises you are given in the hospital 
until your surgeon or physiotherapist directs you otherwise. And finally, remember to pick up your equipment from the Red Cross one week before your surgery so that you can have everything set up and ready for you. Make sure you have a plan for your discharge from hospital, including what vehicle will pick you up and who will be staying with you. And keep on top of your pain, taking your medication as prescribed so that you can do your exercises and get moving to get the most out of your new joint. Good luck with your upcoming surgery.